Hey everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today's video is part three of my card making series. It's the final video. This is card making advanced, what I consider advanced card making. The previous two videos were beginner and intermediate. If you missed them, I'll link them down in the description box if you'd like to check them out. So this is just a continuation of what we've been doing, um, you know, going from basic layered cards to adding more elements and now finally adding even more and making them a little extra special. Now, um, when I think of advanced card making, most mostly I think of the time that's involved in making them because you're uh, adding more detailed elements, more uh, things that just take more time to do. That's why I call them advanced. Not that they necessarily cons or, you know, um, need a higher skill level, just, just more time, more thought, more planning, not necessarily more tools either. But um, in this video, I'm going to uh, show you some cards that I pulled from my stash that I consider advanced, and then we will make one together. All right, so here's one that I uh, that I created recently, and this one I considered advanced because it has a lot of different elements to it. Um, as you can see, it's got the cookie sheet die that has stamping and heat embossing on it. So, you know, that's, um, I'm, I'm not going to show how to do that, the heat embossing. I'm sure you can find instructions, um, you know, in on YouTube somewhere else if you want to know how to do that. There are some glossy accents on the cookie um, word, and I think that makes it look a little bit more glossy and more realistic. So, you know, this would have been fine, the word bake without glossy accents. It would have been fine without the inking around the edges to make it look a little darker. But I think just a little extra touches like that really make it, uh, you know, a, um, an advanced card. So I also added um, different cookies from um, different kinds of cardstock different kinds of, this one is foam actually, it's a glittered foam, and I added Nouveau Drops too to it. Um, I added glue and then glitter to the edges of the cookies to make them look like they're coated in sugar. Just you know, more inking, different elements combined in a fun way, and it did take me a while to make this. And, you know, sometimes you think, well, I spent all this time making a card and the recipient might not even keep it. But, you know, that's okay. Once it's out of my hands, I don't, I really don't care what people do with the cards I make. I enjoy the process of making them and I enjoy sending them to people. I know they like them too, but if they don't keep them forever, it, you know, whatever, it's a card. So this is another one that's advanced. Uh, I consider I did some more heat embossing on it. I combined um, different dies, which I think is also uh, like an advanced level card making because you have to like, you know, look and see what goes best in um, your stash, not necessarily in a, a you know, pre-made kit. So this die here for the banner is different from the frame die, and that's different from the light die. It didn't all come together, but... Uh, once you, you know, you have a collection of dies, you kind of familiar with what you have and you can go back and look and see, you know, what you want to add to your card to bring it all together. Again, I added some inking along the gingerbread just to, you know, add some cookiness to it. Um, I added some stickles. So adding stickles and Nouveau drops, which I did add to the Christmas bulbs there. I think that that's a really good way to add dimension and, um, you know, texture and different materials to your cards. So yeah, this took a while to put together because there is some paper piecing. So, you know, but I think it came out really nice. So it's worth it to me. This one I just made as well. This is a Thanksgiving card. I added a shaker, which I made myself there. Um, inking again, adding glitter. Uh, this is called Wink of Stella, that little bit of shimmer. I don't know if you could see it on the pie crust just to make it look like sugar baking on a, on a pie. Um, cutting out and placing these different twigs in different colors. So, you know, it takes a while. Um, I added a piece of hemp cord here on the pumpkin just to make it add a little extra texture to it and um, layered the wording. So yeah, that's, that's another one. You know, no special skills, but beyond making a shaker, but um, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward, just takes time. 
Here's one that's like an interactive card. And this one, you can open it and there's a shaker inside. So this one definitely took a while to do. Um, it was fun though, because I combined a couple of different Halloween paper pads. I found some little bat sequins that I had in my stash and used them as embellishments. And uh, yeah, this is a sticker from Michael's. So, you know, it, it was fun to make and um, I enjoyed the process. That's that's the best thing about cards. I, I mean, I love how they look when they come out usually, but um, the process of it is just so fun and relaxing and that's, that's my favorite part of it. Here's another one that's kind of advanced, kind of intermediate. It's got a uh, piece of ephemera for the main focus of the card. It's got an embellishment. Um, yeah, this is a, um, not embellishment, embossing folder. Um, I put some stickles on the edges. I consider this more advanced because I do have some inking along the edges just to make it look a little more vintage. These snowflakes came from a cut and emboss folder from Tim Holtz. These are ephemera pieces as well. So this one, um, it took time to put the snowflakes together and do the inking, but not too bad. Here's another one that's advanced, I think, because this die set was a little more complicated than others. A lot of paper piecing, and paper piecing just means um, when you cut out the pieces of an image with a die, there are um, little pieces that pop out that you have to kind of put back together depending on what color combination or patterns you want to make. So, you know, there's some paper piecing here with the, uh, with the belt and the buckle and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but it's fun. So there's that one. And, and I have other ones that are not Christmas cards. This is actually just a card front at this point. But um, another fun thing you can do to your cards to bring them to life is to add some lace or ribbon. So with this curtain die, this is a, you know, a die, this curtain. I added some actual lace behind it, and I think that really brings the curtain vibe uh, to this card. And then I added some ribbons for tie backs there. I thought that was fun too. And um, some... Well, the lace goes all the way down here. So I just glued that on, you know, cut it to size. And uh, yeah, this one is not complicated at all, but it's basically all paper piecing. This is one big die, like a die plate from Tim Holtz. And all these little pieces punch out. So if you want to change your colors, you have to punch it out multiple times of different colors. And then go back and glue them back in, um, you know, wherever you want the different colored ones to be. I added some gold vellum behind some of the windows to make it look like lights are on. Um, I added a heat embossed tag right here. And uh, yeah, that probably took a while too to do the heat embossing, but the paper piecing did take me quite a while. And, um, but you know, it was just, it's very straightforward, just takes a long time and it's beautiful, I think. It was well worth it. Uh, let me just show you a few more. There are, here's another one. This is a St. Patrick's Day one I had made. Um, I used this border die that I had in my stash and some clouds, actually, did I cut those out? No, this was part of an ephemera pack. I just raised the clouds up on dimensional tape. Same thing with this piece of ephemera. But I did stamp and uh, color and fussy cut that pig out with the heart. So that's why I consider that one advanced. All right, how about one more card? Maybe one with um, a lot of Nouveau drops. So this one is very bold, as you could see. And uh, it's a layered card, just like I showed you how to make in the first video. But this one has Nouveau drops um, on two different layers all around. So as you can see right there, and I have a tutorial on how to make your Nouveau drops come out nice and rounded and basically even sizes. I will link that down in the description box if you would like to see, but I'm gonna add some to my project later so you'll be able to see there. All right, let me move these out of the way and we'll get together and in a minute and make a card together. Okay, the way I start to make a card, if I don't have a certain occasion in mind, if I'm just, you know, just want to make a card, um, I find something that inspires me and I go from there. Um, in this case, I want to make something that has to do with hot chocolate. If, right now it's November, um, I'm doing some Christmas crafting, it's getting cold out, so hot chocolate is uh, what I have on my mind. So I was thinking about um, hot like a hot cocoa dyes that I have in my stash. And I have these two by Lawn Fawn. This one is called Stitch Mug Frame. And this set is called Outside In Stitched Mug. And if you combine these, you can make a shaker mug. And it comes with little marshmallow dyes as well and a spoon. So I thought I would use this to make a shaker hot chocolate. And then 
I decided to go from there and then what I do is I pick out the color palette that I want to use and right now I'm really into like the like vintagey papers so I took out this paper that I just got from Frantic Stamper it's by Authentique it's called Rejoice 17 from the Rejoice collection and I did cut some of it down I'll show you but this is what I have left of this paper um, it's got Christmas cookies on it gingerbread cookies so I thought this would be a great background for my card um, I also use some of this paper, also from the same collection. This is Rejoice 14. It's just got like a, um, a tonal cookie print, and I'm going to use this for the background of the shaker. I use this red because it's a perfect match to the reds in this one. And this is from Series Kitchen, and this one's called Borders PD5310. These are all from Frantic Stamper. Um, I wanted to add a candy cane, so I used this rustic candy cane distressed paper, and this one is by Maha Design, and it's Christmas season candy canes. All right, so those are the papers we're using. I'm also using a white glitter that I get from Michaels. It's in the open cardstock section, and it does not have any uh, other colors in the glitter. It's just pure white, which I like to use for like a whipped cream and stuff. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make this together. I might have to like fast forward some parts if it gets too long, but this is the base set I cut down. And um, as you can see, the top and the bottom are bordered the same. And that's a little bit bigger than the standard A2 size. Instead of five and a half inches, it's like five and a half plus, plus an eighth, whatever that is, uh, five eighths maybe. So, you know, when the good thing about making your own cards, you can make them whatever size you want. So I just added a little bit extra here and a little bit extra on this side. So yeah, it's close to an A2 size, but you know, you can make it, like I said, any size you want. And, um, to save a little bit of time, I cut out the pieces of the um, mug. I cut out this piece to, uh, to be the frame, and this is just like a green tonal I thought would look nice on the card. And then I cut out a piece of three millimeter foam that I get from uh, Wandy Foam on Etsy. I'll link that down below. I love this foam. That's to make enough space for your shaker. I cut out a piece of acetate with the die, and then this is the background piece that I was telling you. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the shaker together. My last card that I made, um, I did have a comment or two that people were asking me to put the shaker together there, and the only reason I didn't was because it took some time to do, and um, you know, when you're making a video, you wanna you know, take as little time as possible, so. Um, and I did link to some shaker videos I made in the past, but I figured right now we can do one together. So let me move that paper actually and do it on here. So I'm just taking my, sorry, I hit my tripod, my Nouveau adhesive, deluxe adhesive, and I'm going to make little dots all around the edge. Okay, I'm going to take my piece of acetate and gently press it onto there. Some people like to use double-sided tape for their shakers. And I understand that because wet glue can get messy, but I don't, when it's, especially when it's rounded like this, I don't like to deal with cutting a bunch of different little pieces of tape or bending it. And this is just easier for me. And I'm just careful with the glue so it doesn't go in the, um, you know, the part that you could see. All right, so we have that. And now we're gonna take the foam piece and that goes on next. So I'm gonna put glue on this part of the foam So there you go, you can see all the glue. So you can either press it down or put this side on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on top. Put it in the right spot. Okay, now you see there's a little glue there. So you can either go in now and wipe that off or just forget about it. We're going to go ahead and fill it with our shaker mix. And to save time, I did make one ahead of time. Let me just show you what I put in there. I put in some little gingerbread men, some snowflakes, some candy canes, 
Um, I always like to add a little bit of shine, so I added some gold glitter sequins. I added some clear sequins that are stars and circles. And yeah, so a whole bunch of different things. Uh, it's hard to say how much you need. I just kind of guesstimate. This looks like about a teaspoon or so. So I'm just gonna make sure this is all pressed down enough. Okay, and now go ahead and take your shaker mix and pour it right in. Now that's a lot. That's more than I wanted, but you know what? I'm just gonna leave it in. Okay, and then you go ahead and take your backing right here, and I'm gonna put glue all around the edges and then put the backing on. So put the glue on the foam. You don't want glue on the middle part. You want the sequin mix to be able to move around freely all around. Again, you don't need the handle part necessarily for the back of the shaker, but I wanna keep it all even. Okay, go ahead and take your take the right side and press it, put it face down and then press it into place. Okay. Now we'll let that dry and we'll work on the rest of the card. Okay, while that's drying, let me show you a few other things we're going to use. This is a whipped cream die set that I had from a different um set in my stash. I believe it's from Hmm, Chaos Craft, I think. I'll link it down below. But um, so that's another way to use your dies, combine them in different ways. This does not go with this, but I like how it looks together. I also wanted to add some Christmas toppings. So I found a, um, oops, little heart mixed in there. I found a candy cane die that I had. So I got that out as well. Um, I wanted to add a little gingerbread man because gingerbread men are my thing and I think a lot of us are into them. So I found this little die too. I will link these as well. Look at that little face on them. And this one's so easy to make. You just cut out the background and the front. So I got that as well. And um, yeah, so those are the other dies that we're gonna use. So let me show you how to do a little bit of inking just in case you're curious. Um, I am not an expert in inking at all, but I wanted to show you my process just in case you're wondering how I do it. Okay, so what I do is, this is Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo. You can get this at many craft stores. Um, this is the color I usually use to do my like aging, you know, like make it look a little bit more vintage and aged. And I use one of these brushes I got in a pet. This one I got from Amazon in a set. I'll try and link that down below as, as well, but you can find these all over the place. But Amazons are really good. And they, they have different colors of the handles, so you can kind of color code them. Like I always use my yellow one for my browns. So what I do is I go ahead and tap it on my ink pad and then I kind of just like start it off on a piece of paper like that. And then I just go in a circle and kind of land on my paper. Let me zoom in so you can see closer. I hope you can hear this because sometimes when I zoom in it's hard to hear. But go ahead and swirl and just age the edge of your paper. Okay, go ahead and turn your paper, add some more ink, and just use circles. And that makes a really nice blended line, you know, no harsh border on it. And I like to just go all the way around like that. And if you're making a vintage style card, or traditional. This really brings it to life, I think. Isn't that pretty? I think that came out so nice. And we're going to try that with the gingerbread too, because not to necessarily age it, add some, you know, like it looks like it was baked on the edges. So uh, you can use a smaller brush for something like this, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this one and just use the tip of it on the edge. Now this is just the outline piece of the gingerbread cookie. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue on the, uh, the piece that has the face and everything on it. But I just wanted to do this first before we get the white part on. Cause the white part is more like frosting and this is more like the actual cookie part. Okay, so we have that. See how much that looks more like a cookie than just plain, um, plain almond color. 
And okay, so this is, let me zoom back out. Okay, so this is the part that I cut out of the, the uh, like the face dye, and this is just like a cream color. So what I'm gonna do is glue this onto the background piece and it looks more like a cookie that way. Okay, so go ahead and make your cookie. And we'll add some decorations to this cookie too, but first we'll get them set up like that. All right, um, I think there was something else I wanted to age a little bit. Yes, I'm going to add, we're thinking about adding this tag. Now this I got from a, a digital file on Etsy. I'll link it down below from the LOTV Digi Shop on Etsy. And I printed it out on tan paper and just cut it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of um, Distress Oxide to this as well, to the edges. And um, I also added an eyelet to it too. And this is a piece of hemp cord that I got from Hobby Lobby to tie it onto the cup. So there's that. So we have our cookie. I also cut out um, that die I showed you about the candy cane. I cut it out of some of that vintage candy cane paper. And then I cut some white glitter for the edging to make it look really cute. So those are the adornments we're gonna use. And also in this die set, it does come with marshmallow dies. So I went ahead and cut, that, cut those out of the foam and also that cream paper. So I made a bunch of little marshmallows, the marshmallow shapes, and there are heart-shaped ones. So, you know, I figured maybe we can add those to the card on the outside as well. All right, so we have our shaker. We have our card base. We have the whipped cream. Did I show you the whipped cream? No. I made this out of that white glitter paper with that um, with the die set I was showing you. And I used two millimeter foam for this one because I wanted to be uh, set back a little bit from the hot cocoa so I could put some like cookies and stuff on the front. So, you know, just a little bit of planning. No biggie. So I'm going to move the uh, paper out of the way. Always use like a piece of scrap paper when you're doing your inking just so... You could throw that out afterwards. All right, so we have our card base. We're going to take our um, shaker is definitely the focus of the card. So we'll figure out where that's going to go. I like to just, you know, like give it a dry run first before I glue everything down. So we have the whipped cream on the hot cocoa cup. And as you can see, it goes really nicely on that. We're going to tie this around the handle. Oh, and I also tied a bow already. Yes. Um, I like to have the bow separate from the tie just because you don't have to worry about it, you know, being tied in the right place. You just glue it on top. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So we have these, these. This will probably go here behind the cup. This too. Um, we've got a few of the marshmallows. Oh, and the spoon. I forgot about that. I cut a spoon out from this set as well. Um, I used that red paper I was talking about. Oh, this is what I wanted to add some distress oxide too as well okay oops sorry sorry guys all right so I'm going to go ahead use whatever's left on the on the brush and just age a spoon a little bit and I'm just going to do it on the bottom just to give it kind of like a shadow because it does have that line cut out there already so we'll make that work to our advantage and that'll be our shadow line okay so there's our spoon. So I wanted to put this like under the cup, something like that. Okay. And then we're going to add some Nouveau drops too once it's all put down together because Nouveau drops take a while to dry. So we want to make sure it's all done. All right. So now let's go ahead and I think I will probably speed it up here and you could just watch how I glue everything down. All right, so I forgot to tie the the tag onto the cup before I glued it down. So I go ahead, I went ahead and did that before it dried, and then I put some more glue on it to um, glue it down. So yeah, make mistake, just fix it as soon as you can. So let's go on with gluing things on.
Okay, so as you can see there, I wasn't sure how I wanted to put the candy cane in there. So I ended up sticking it behind the whipped cream. I think that looks kind of cute. So, but I'm not really happy with this gap that's right here. So I think I'm gonna add some trim to there. I've got this piece of rickrack that I think I'm gonna add right up here and that'll create a nice border between the cup and the whipped cream. So as you can see, like I was saying um, in the intro to this card making video, that adding different kinds of trim really bring your cards to another level as well. And they help you camouflage things too. Like if you have an uneven border, something you want to cover up, adding a piece of rickrack or lace or ribbon. Um, looks like you meant it to be there all along, even though it's kind of a cover up. So. Yeah, so we've got that going for us. All right, now we have the spoon. I want this to be dimensional a little bit, so I'm gonna add some double-sided tape, some foam tape. This is the kind that I get from the Dollar Tree to the back of it. Um, you could always cut it to size if it's not the correct size. So I'm gonna put a piece here and then a couple of thin pieces along the length of the spoon. and stick them on wherever you'd like. I'm putting the shadow part at the bottom. Should I do it that way or that way? Definitely this way, shadow at the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could put it over the cup, but no, I think it looks better like that. Okay, yeah, I like that. And then we could put some marshmallows right there. That would be cute. Maybe some of the like heart-shaped ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. Isn't that cute? All right, a little bit of glue. Love this three-in-one craft glue or Fabri-Tac would be good for this. Something nice and strong to hold this dimensional foam on. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. All right. Let's add some more marshmallows around maybe. Um, let's see. Should we put one there? It gets a little bit lost there, doesn't it? Maybe down here. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we need that. Maybe over here. Nope. Up in the whipped cream? No, definitely not too big. We'll add something else in the whipped cream. But no, I think we'll just leave those marshmallows. See, things change as you're making your card. I thought for sure I would add some more marshmallows, but I don't like them on there, so I'm not going to. All right, so for the whipped cream, I was thinking we'd add some Nouveau drops. And I wanna add, wanna add some to the gingerbread guy too. But before we do that, I'm gonna glue it to the card base just because once you add the Nouveau drops, like I said, you don't have um, any time to do anything else unless you wanna risk smudging them. So I cut a card base to size. Since this one's a little bit bigger than an A2, I had to go ahead and use a 12 by 12 card or a um, piece of card stock, because if you use an eight and a half by 11, you need more than 11 inches to double it up. So you have to use a 12 by 12. So just, you know, depends obviously on whatever size card you're making for what size card stock you need for the base. Okay, so just put glue all over, take our pretty card and Slide it into place. And I just use like a cream color just to go with the front of the card. Oh, look how cute this is, you guys. I love it. As long as you select papers that coordinate together, um, add different textures of paper too. I added glitter, I added solids, I added patterns. That really adds a richness and depth to your cards makes them look professional. So there's our card so far. All right, so you see on the gingerbread, there are a couple of like indented dots right there. So we'll add some Nouveau drops there. And then I think we'll add some to the whipped cream to look like, you know, like sprinkles or candies or something. 
And then that might be it. I brought over this Nouveau Drops. This one is called Rudolph's Nose, and this is Dream Drops, and it has an iridescent red finish to it. And I also brought this one over too. This is a nice glittery one. This one's called White Blizzard. This is Glitter Drops. I don't know. I thought maybe we'd add some frosting somewhere. Let's see. All right, so to add Nouveau Drops, if I don't store it upside down, and this one was not stored upside down, I always do a test drop because there might be an air bubble in there and you want to get that out. So let me move this over. So I just hold it a little bit above the paper, squeeze gently, and then do bloop, bloop, like that. And you see it's a nice dot. And they come out evenly if you do that double bloop. I don't know, works for me. All right, so let's go ahead and add some bloops to our gingerbread. So we're gonna do it on those three. Now I'm trying to do it through the camera, but I can't. So I'm gonna have to do it around the camera. There's a little piece of glue there. Okay, I'm gonna do another test drop just because I'm not confident in that. All right, here we go with our bloops. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, that one needs another one. Bloop. Okay. Ta-da. See, he has a little extra little bloop there. So just go ahead, take your finger now, and lift it off. No one will ever know. So there. Nice, right? All right, let's add some bloops to our whipped cream. Just wherever you want. I'll put one on the top or towards the top. Bloop, bloop. These I'll make a little bit bigger. They're so pretty. They look like little, like, cinnamon candies. They've got like that heat to them. I'm not gonna go crazy, I'll just add a few. So I think our card is done, you guys. Um, should we add some sparkle to somewhere? There's sparkle in the cup, which I think especially for a Christmas card, you wanna have sparkle. There's sparkle in the whipped cream. I'm wondering if Gingy, Gingy needs a little. Let's give her a little sparkle, you know? This video is probably really long, but we gotta, we got to do it the way we like it. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle Nouveau Drops to her frosting lines. Just a little. And with this kind, the sparkle one, it dries pretty clear with glitter. So you don't have to, like, you know, make a perfect line. So there. Yeah, a little bit of sugar on her. That's nice. And maybe a little bit on the tag, too. Maybe a little bit in the hot cocoa. Just a little, just to tie it together. Okay, that is it. This is our finished card. Everything's not dry yet, but we can admire it. Do you like it? I think it came out so nicely. I love it. I love the distress look combined with the sparkle. It just, uh, you know, it's kind of, um, it complements each other, the different elements and the different finishes. So yeah, that's how to take your card making to a next level, add lots of different things, add trim, add shakers, add inking, add stamping. This was a digital stamp, so I didn't actually have to stamp it. Um, just, you know, combine different die sets from your stash to make it your own. You know, it doesn't have to look like everybody else's. Go ahead and use your creativity. Like I said in the intermediate video, trust your crafty instincts. If you think something's going to look nice together, try it. And if you don't like it, don't use it. You know, save it for something else and start over because that's the way you'll be proud of your things if you keep going until you're really happy with it. All right, you guys, so that is it. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this video and for this series. Again, I'll put the other ones, the other ones linked down below and I will link some helpful videos down in the description box as well. So thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I have lots of crafty videos, tutorials, hauls, project shares, all that sort of thing. And I'm on Instagram as well, strawberrycream39. Thanks for everybody who watches me and leaves me such nice comments. I, I appreciate you all, all the time. I will talk to you guys later and have a great day. Bye.